All glories to Amrita and Danvantari and to Nitai Goranga, Janavi Nitai and all the countless eternal soul flames of love. <clears throat> so today a new version of a video that I previously had on my channel but which was a bit freaky trying to make it a little bit more easily accessible to everyone the twofold process of awakening I and self becoming philosophical contemplations by Krishna Chandra Prabhu from Switzerland and translated by myself and the help of some online translator into English. It's not completely polished translation, but <clears throat> I want to share it with the world nonetheless. So every human being goes through a two-phase development process consisting of becoming I, which is embodiment, and becoming oneself, spiritualization or spiritual self-realization. The first is called formation of the outer personality and also the subtle identities and so on. And the second is only effective individuation or true spirituality. It means the true individual self. Carl Jung distinguishes the ego or provisional identity, which I call short provi because the word ego has been um, negatively charged, so therefore I prefer the word provi for provisional identity. So he distinguishes as that which one is in contact with when one says, I want to go there now, I want to learn, I want to listen music now that I knows what it wants but it's also in danger of circling around showing off in front of others and pose as great so these are all tendencies of the provisional identity but it's also in danger la, la, la. Jung believes that early in life it is important to develop a strong ego or provi one that knows how to fight and assert itself so think about this. If we don't have it in this world, we are all obviously going to be in so much trouble that we will also ultimately not be able to practice self-realization in a proper way. But we will come to that. After that, it's about moving from I to self. The self is the innermost core, the soul, which also gives space to the divine reality within itself. In contrast to the Provi, I am not allowed to let go of this self. So we can have some Provi, but we need not be identified with it. It can be just, it's just a functional body, um, just like the gross body has some use and some function, but we don't need to overly identify with it. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. The task of human life is precisely to get more and more to this self, to discover the innermost individual core and to live according to it. At this point, the past becomes religious, so-called religious, that is, God related. You know, the word religion also is charged with a negative connotation due to all the um, fake religions, organized religions, and misuse of religion. But basically, the word religio just means to reconnect with God and relate with God. So, therefore, it's religious. This requires human maturity. In order to come to this self, it is important to let go of the demands of the Provi that wants to grab and own things. And to recognize precisely that there is more peace and joy in letting go of the ideas of my superficial self-roles 
then in asserting and fulfilling them. Yeah, should be roles actually. Okay. Of course, some needs have to be fulfilled, but it cannot be the be all and all goal of life. The provi I, you know, the I wants to impress, I would say provi, you know, the prof I. Prof I wants to impress because it has no real identity and existence in reality. No real identity and no, no real identity and no existence in reality and has to assert, assert itself artificially. So because it doesn't have any lasting identity, existence, it is always threatened with um, annihilation and therefore it's trying to assert itself in many ways. It inflates and develops grandiose self-images that have no relation to reality or very little relation to reality. This self-isolation is called human life in everyday life. When Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita speaks about self-realization, the discovery of essential identity, he mentions that it requires an absolute radicalism and that one cannot simply dwell on the small compromises in life. Now I want to look at the word radicalism. Actually it means, uh, it comes from the word radika which means root also. Uh, of course radika in another sense means also the one who is uh, the, the one who is worshiping or pleasing the supreme but that's a different radica but in the Latin the word radix means root so it means to go to the essential you know to the source and not stay on the surface that's what meant here by radicalism not that one has to be a crazy fanatic uh, fundamentalist whatever when your discovering power has emerged from the thick forest of delusion you will become indifferent to all that has been heard and that is yet to be heard about this world and the next that's Bhagavad Gita 252 so thank you very much for tuning in to this part one of the twofold process of awakening um, we will continue in the next one and hope to see you there comment like, subscribe, and share for the benefit of all. Thank you very much. Jai Sri Radhe Shyam.